Alleged witches murdered by Boko Haram in Nigeria. On November 10th, a group of 14 women were accused of using witchcraft were killed by the Islamic terrorist group Boko Haram. According to Takwe Line, a woman who escaped two weeks ago, roughly 40 women were held in a village near uh, Guoza town. Takwe said that the commander, Gilile, uh, ordered his men to detain the women from the houses where they practiced quote-unquote witchcraft. He accused the women of the sudden death of his children. Even though a clear description of how the crime was committed is yet to be revealed, the term used in the Hausa language for describing the deaths meant slitting their throats. Since Takwe's escape, 12 additional women have been killed. Security sources in Nigeria confirmed that they were aware of the circumstances and actively investigating. However, a thorough investigation was impossible as the village is located in a remote area. Hmm. What, what is, what is their, what did they get out of this? I mean, what does someone get out of it is a, that's a, that's a difficult and loaded question. So I know in parts of Western Africa in general, there are, there is a culture of, um, persecution of alleged witches that is across religions. This happens in Christian communities. This happens in Islamic communities. And it particularly affects certain vulnerable demographics. So um, usually widows, widows are usually persecuted this way. Old women, um, elderly people, and orphans are, uh, or maybe bad children, unruly children are most likely to be accused of witchcraft. And um, basically it's kind of this belief that like, if something bad happens, and this is like a, you know, very simplified version of things, right? Um, That it's not that something bad just happened. It's that there was someone bad in the community that caused this to happen. And so the finger is pointed at a lot of these vulnerable communities. And yeah, Dia's right, saying witch hunting is usually associated with Christianity. This surprised me. You do tend to see this more in areas that are more Christian. They have exorcisms that are actually, that are highly abusive and oftentimes very dangerous. And um, actually the Nigerian activist we were talking about earlier, Leo Igwe, has a huge project and did part of his doctoral thesis on this practice. And they used to throw people into a river with crocodiles as a witch test. Um, But now all the crocodiles are extinct. But they subject people to witch tests, which are basically, you know, completely BS practices that are like, oh, which way does a stick fall or um, other, you know, other just things that are up to chance, right? Complete chance about whether, and then the way that someone interprets the way that maybe like dice or eggs were thrown, rocks, whatever, th- that has your life on the line about if you're seen to be a witch or not. And then if you're a witch, I mean, the abuses that people go through, I don't even know if I can describe on YouTube, to be honest. Um, but th- this happened with Boko Haram, which I thought was very interesting. So apparently there was a leader who had some children die very suddenly in the night, according to reports, or at least that was the motivation as to why. And then just accused all these women and went after them. But obviously, uh, religious practices are very diverse across regions. But generally, is witchcraft a belief in Islam, like in general? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were, we, when, when we were kids, we were told in school that Muhammad said that a witch, uh, what you're supposed to do with a witch or a wizard is one um hit by a sword just right. one what do you mean you hit so you strike them with a sword and that one strike if it kills them then th- that that's the punishment but if they survive that one strike with a sword then you have to let them heal so oh. you hit you str- you strike them with a sword and you let if they heal they heal um if they die they die but the punishment is one strike with a sword Okay, but there is there a belief that people actually have access to these kinds of powers? Because oh, yeah. Because how I, how I no, was no. raised in a Catholic household was like, 
only God has these powers, but there are people who pretend to have powers and that is trickery and falsehood. And that's why that's wrong, but they don't actually have those powers. So that's like okay. a very, can you explain that difference in belief? Because that's what confuses me. No, no, no. They have no, the belief. First of all, Christianity does believe that other people have powers, both Christianity. I mean, Christianity. No, I said that's Islam. how I was raised. Okay, okay. But so what you were raised with is not traditional Christian belief, okay? Judaism, um, Islam, and Christianity believe that there are real wizards and witches, and they have magical powers. And usually the belief is that they got their magical powers uh, through their association with jinns or demons, right? So they make deals with the devil or certain demons and that's how they get their powers right and and the prophets they get their power well the prophets don't actually have any power uh it's god's miracle so when a prophet does miracles it's basically channeling god's power the prophet himself doesn't have any powers right and so like in islam we are told that one way for you to notice that somebody's powers are uh, f so something that is very telling about witches and wizards is that when they do prophecy, when they pretend to do prophecy, they actually don't have any knowledge about the future. They only like demons, for example, will come and tell them things about your private life that only you know. So you're impressed by it because demons know certain things that is only known to you, right? And that's why these witches and wizards, they claim like, oh, look, I know these secrets about you and you're impressed. And then they prophesy something for you. But only God has the knowledge of the future. So what these demons are telling you about your future is false information, right? Anyway, so there is a lot of these beliefs. Like, for example, in Iran, the law is that um, we have a law against witchcraft and wizardry in, in Iran on the books with the understanding that these things are real. That's, so, yeah. I mean, we know that's crazy. I mean, I know Khamenei talks about like demonic spirits. Oh, yeah. I mean, the West is an actual thing. So that's crazy. No, no. Yeah, but, no. Khamenei, <laughs> Khamenei has like some serious speech saying that the enemy, uh, had, Khamenei officially announced that Iran's enemies are in cahoots with demons. Okay. And He's not being metaphorical. Like he thinks like Israel and the United States, they actually sit around the table and there are demons sitting at these tables. Okay. Actual living demons, not metaphor for anything else. And humans and demons are coming up with strategies against the foreign policy of the Iranian regime. This is our actual beliefs. One of the rings that Khamenei has on his fingers are specifically made for him to protect him protect him against evil magic right and we have even in islamic hadith this is a belief both by sunnis and shias muhammad got sick one time uh for by a curse by some people who were using demonic powers um against them so he, you know even even the prophet of god is not immune to uh, you know demonic magic by magicians and stuff like that does, yeah. how does this not challenge the concept of the oneness of god that there are other sources that have these kinds of powers it confuses me no because these sources are not divine these are like there's no divinity magical powers does not necessarily divinity like deem okay so muslims believe in demons but in jinn well they call it in jinns right jinns in islam are magical creatures just because something is magical, it doesn't mean that it's divine. So it doesn't challenge the oneness of God. There are many things that are magical. There's only, Islam, when you say Tawheed, there's only one thing, supposedly one thing, which is actually a contradiction in Islam. There's supposed to be only one thing that is divine. This is what the Mutazali said. Yeah. Is Allah all powerful? Yes. Obviously. Yes. And so like 
But he, Allah is all powerful, and he makes magical like, creatures and their magical powers reverse yeah, well, their magical. What? <laughs> no, Allah made. They say Allah made a whole bunch of magical creatures, including angels and demons. Right. So these are magical creatures with magical powers. Some of them use some of these, and not in in Islam, not all jinns are evil. Right, some of the gens are kind of like humans. There are some of them that are good, some of them are bad. They could use their magical powers for good, or they could use their magical powers for evil. But humans are not supposed to use their magical powers of the demons of the gens. Anyways, it gets complicated. So you are. <laughs> I should stop asking questions. <laughs> right, right. The gens who use their magical powers to interfere in human affairs, they're not good. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, witches and wizards are people in Islam who who get in cahoots with the demon, with the jinns or demons, uh, to meddle in the people's lives, and usually that's they say that doesn't have a good outcome. And I was, by the way, I was asking what is in it for them because I usually look at whatever these radical groups do, or anybody else that does uh, in Islam or Christianity. I I look for a political motive because a lot of atheists usually think that it, when when there's some ridiculous beliefs by religious people then the religious beliefs explains the entirety of why they're doing something right but it's mm -hmm. usually not that black and white there's usually some political motive that is shield that is that has a religious excuse or covering or an explanation or narrative right but the motivation is usually something that goes beyond just a religious belief, right? So if I had to guess, for example, here, I have no idea, but I'm just guessing, right? If I'm guessing, like, why would Boko Haram, like, be insistent upon, like, finding these witches and killing them? I would say it's a, it's a, it's a way of uh, signaling enforcing power in the region. Like, they're looking for a crime to punish as a way to signal who's in charge around this region. That's how I would say, uh, what's in, if I say what's in it for them, that would be what I, my guess would be. So Pakistani Defense Forces, how do they prove if someone is a witch? They have, like, it's very bad. Like, if you look at the, the reasons why they come up with for someone is a witch, it's like, I, um, I don't know about these specific cases, but the cases that I've seen, is based on rumors and such bad so-called evidence, such lame attempts. But then, at the end of the day, sometimes like there's a saying that people say they're looking for a neck for a rope, for the rope that they have, right? So it's not like there was somebody that they committed the crime and they're they're executing the punishment. It's that they wanted to punish somebody. They're just looking for an excuse for somebody to punish as a way to exert their authority. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, completely. Like I, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.